Yeah, yeah, I will. All right. Thanks very much, Harry. Uh, let's no go problem. to business headlines now. Robert Lack is in for Louise Martin. And Robert, Canada, it appears, is leading the world in something we do not want to lead the world in. That's the subject of mortgage fraud. In fact, I'm going to talk about that a little bit later with a, a guest here in our studio. But give us a, a sense, Robert, of just how bad this problem is in the country. Well, you know, Heather, this is something that most people hadn't even heard of a year ago, but the stories of people losing their homes to this type of fraud are so heartbreaking that it's fast becoming a big issue, and I know you have that in a, in a few minutes. This was the topic at an anti-fraud conference in Toronto yesterday where credit card and mass marketing scams, the usual top scams, are now taking a back seat to mortgage fraud. This is a fraud where people take on someone else's identity to take out a mortgage on a property that they don't own. By the time the real homeowners have caught on, they can owe hundreds of thousands of dollars. There is a move to crack down on such fraud and protect legitimate homeowners in Ontario, but many critics are saying it's not nearly enough and that the problem has now reached epidemic proportions. And right now, the experts are saying your only real defense is to protect your information zealously. So Heather, don't carry sensitive documents around with you and shred everything. Good advice. Robert, thank you very much. Robert Lack is uh, our guest in for Louise Martin today. Thank you. Now let's talk more about that very story, the subject of mortgage fraud. As we heard, Ontario is going ahead with new legislation to protect homeowners, increasing fines from one now up to $50,000. But it's too late for my next guest, Susan Lawrence, already a victim of mortgage fraud, and she is my guest here in studio. Susan, thanks for coming in. To tell us a story that, as Robert mentioned, there are many in Canada who probably don't even know this exists, let alone have met somebody to whom it's happened. Tell us your story. It's a year ago, one. I yes. didn't know it existed. Uh, about a year ago, I, without my knowledge or consent, someone I literally stole my house, put a mortgage on it for over $300,000. All I did was put a for sale sign on my lawn. How do they do that? They forged a sale, and then they went to the bank with fraudulent documents, um, bank documents, employment records, and they got a mortgage on the property. I found out about it by accident two months later. How did you find out? I was in the process. I had sold my house right. to a, a reputable uh, couple, and they had... Uh, I'd gone to buy a new property. When I went to the bank to arrange a mortgage on the new property, I was told I didn't own the property I was presently in and thought I owned at the time. And you did what? Had a fit. <laughs> <laughs> Susan, I remember, that's probably the understatement of the century here. And, and then began a whole process of figuring out what had happened? Yeah, that, okay, so that was the hard part. That. The hardest part was trying to get someone to help me. Because like I say, I, I knew nothing. I knew nothing about title insurance, which is one way to protect yourself. I knew nothing about how these people... I, I, I couldn't even imagine going through the efforts that they'd gone through to forge these documents and gone to the bank for this mortgage. And I, I just kept plowing on and trying to find found someone that helped me. Finally, I got a terrific lawyer, Morris Cooper, who without him, I don't know where I'd be today. So essentially, this is an identity theft. Yes. They had stolen your identity and then proceed with fraudulent documents. So to the bank's knowledge, this was really Susan Lawrence yes. who was seeking a mortgage and getting rid of her home. Yes. And then you got stuck with no home? No home. Well, they tried to evict me. It was Maple Trust was the uh, company they took the mortgage out with. And one night I came home and they tried to evict me from my home. And after that, I thought, let's go public with this. People need to know about this. Fortunately, they dropped the charges or they dropped the paper, so I never was evicted. I'm still in the house. I have title back, but I still have a $300,000 mortgage on it. Really? Mm -hmm. It's just a, it's a heartbreaker. It is. And you've got a nice smile. You're, you're having good humor <laughs> through all of this. But has that been the reaction? You can't imagine that this could happen to you or anyone. Everybody says when I tell them, it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable. How could this happen? But I've seen the documents. I've seen the forged documents. I've seen paperwork with my signature on it. I've Where would they have got your signature? It's say? not my signature. Not. Every page is a different signature. I've seen documents with um, my real estate agent. They forged her signature as well. I went through a lot of trouble to do this. And as it's ended up, was sort of a, can we call this a happy ending? I mean, you still are in your house right now. You have the mortgage, of course, which is not a happy ending, but you're in your property. It will be a happy ending. On November 28th, we what went to appeal then? court. We okay. went to appeal court. And uh, earlier in June, I'd gone to Superior Court to get title of my house back. And I also asked them to dismiss the mortgage. They couldn't do that because it's based on a precedent-setting case that uh, took part last November. So I had to go to appeals court. I went to appeals court. My lawyer 
threw my case in front of five respected judges, and now we're just waiting for their decision. So hopefully, fingers crossed. Cross fingers yes. for that. Yes. There, there, is a, there is a conference going on looking into various facets of fraud and looking as one of those topics at mortgage fraud and calling it an epidemic problem. Is that your sense? I mean, I think so. The government insists, and they've said it to me more than once, that there's only 10 cases a year. But that's 10 cases that apply to this fund that they have. It's called the Land Titles Assurance Fund. Mm -hmm. I know personally five people that have been affected by this that have not been registered with the fund. It's not part of the 10 people that they're saying. I, I think it's epidemic. I do. So having gone through this situation, what's your advice to someone just learning about this number one and now thinking, I've got to protect myself? Check your title. And secondly, get titled insurance. It's an insurance that will, if I had have had it, like I say, I didn't know nothing about it when this whole thing started. I would have been all the legal costs that I've gone through and all the trouble that I've gone through, the insurance company would have looked after. As you fought this? Yes. How much has it, co has it cost you to retain 30, your house? $30,000. 30000 so And I far. haven't got it back yet. And your mortgage that you still have? Well, hopefully they'll dismiss it. Yeah. So the lesson? From Susan Lawrence to everyone watching is protect your identity and get title insurance on your home, whether you have a mortgage or not. It's valuable information and you're pretty uh, strong to come forward with that publicly. So thanks very much for talking to us, Susan. Thank very you, important information to convey today.